Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. This is uh, round two. So let's check the board. So now we can have a look at what uh, JB did at the end of round one. It looks like he's gone for the uh, the aggressive fleet in the Pacific, <laughs> which makes me nervous because I think I'm aware that the Allied team are coordinating, so their game plan has me concerned, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I've got to be careful. Um, it was a nice move, I guess, because obviously they took out my fleet in the East Indies and now they're pressuring um, with an American fleet, and that's dangerous for me because I'm, I'm short on numbers. So I have to now, I'm, I'm forced to spend on sea, in the sea, to try and match the uh, the US fleet, um, which is not ideal for me because I'd like to be pressuring India with everything I've got, you know, the bombardments, and I like all my planes available to uh, attack if I need them to. So, yeah, I'll have to be careful here. Um, but first of all, let's have a look at uh, round two then. Let's have a look at... Uh, the Russian and German player, and the British player went out too. So round two, yeah, fairly standard. I'm aware there's been some back and forth between these two. <laughs> um, so they've taken, I think, so the Russian player took Corelli, I believe. Was it actually the combat situation? So yeah, so Russia won, destroyed six infantry and three tanks. Ouch. Okay, and lost six infantry. Not a bad trade for the Russian player there, because obviously they took out three tanks, which are, which are valuable, obviously. That's 18 IPC worth uh, gone. So, in response, uh, Arvid has... Sorry, this vehicle's outside. I'm currently recording. Obviously, it's, it's really warm today, so I have to keep the window open. But that means there's <laughs> we're getting vehicle noises from the road nearby, so I apologise for that. Um, okay, so, Arvid. He recaptured France. Good. Um, heavy attack on the Caucasus, wow, okay. Um, and also, wow, eight tanks, then. okay, wow. So two really big attacks then on uh, Caucasus and Corellia simultaneously. So let's have a look at the combat situation then. So Caucasus, Germany won, obviously. Um, destroyed four artillery, eight infantry, two fighters, one bomber. Wow, bloody hell. That's a great trade for Germany. That's, I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Come up for that definitely. Um, Corellia, Germany one, destroyed three tanks, two artilleries. Okay, fairly even trade there. That's that's pretty even. So, looking alright. I think it, we lost a bit, lost quite a bit there, but I think we're overall it's not too bad. So what will probably happen is Russia will retake the Caucasus. I would guess um, the next round. Um, and I'd imagine probably he'd probably stack this Archangel with at least one infantry just to kind of avoid the blitz. Because um, that tank is going to fall to it, you know. One of these three units here, like one infantry, one uh, artillery, and the infantry from the West Russia could go there maybe. I'm not sure. See what he thinks feels about it. But I'd imagine the Caucasus would fall again. And let's look at Britain then. So this is interesting, actually. I like this. He, he went for an attack. He tried to, re to retake the Caucasus with um, three tanks from India, um, which is good for me, because obviously my, my game plan currently is just to try and take India, hopefully by round three if I can. Um, so a weakened India is good for me. Um, I think we got lucky by the looks of it. What did he destroy, actually, in the Caucasus? Yeah, so it's a pretty even fight, to be fair. It looks like it was four tanks... Um, versus three tanks and a fighter, so the odds were slightly in the favour of... Uh, actually, no, it was, it was even, wasn't it, actually? Yeah, it was even. Everyone was attacking on a three. So, yeah, we were fortunate to hold on to the Caucasus. It's good for Arvid. Uh, obviously, that means it's better for me as well. It's good. Yes, yeah, so the nice thing about these two fighters in Russia, um, it gives uh, the real keep the option to move down, move them back to India if he needs to. So, my plan this round is to go, obviously, to... Um, capture Burma and prep for the uh, attack on India so he can then move these guys down to defend so yeah they're, they're quite a, a useful defensive tool the fighters but for now I think we need to focus on our purchases so in terms of land troops we're okay we can hold this if we attack well I'm hoping to that the odds are in our favor we hold that so I'm gonna leave that as it is um, we we'll move this infantry slowly I think through China and try and take out a few uh, provinces but the main thing is going to be just uh, matching the US fleet I think so I don't want to get overwhelmed by uh, <laughs> the US Navy here it's looking pretty pretty scary so 
I think what we'll do, we'll go for a battleship and a carrier just to support more fighters if we need to. We currently have one carrier. Obviously, we lost the one near the East Indies, so we'll, we'll uh, replenish that. Uh, we currently have only three fighters though, which is a shame. I would like more, so I may next and I may just get one more so we can get a full uh, four in the ocean. Um, with the battleships. We'll see. Because this is where I would like the troops that are in the sea zone to help me out with the uh, with India. Because obviously I'm, I'm short on fighters. There's normally optimal. There's, there's going to be six fighters and one bomber attacking uh, India. Right now we're on pretty much half numbers, so that's not, not great. Okay, let's do it. So, combat move. Again, I'm going to slowly start chipping away at this economy. There's still a lot of provinces around here that need to take care of. This as well is kind of difficult for me to deal with because I, I want to be pressuring India obviously um, I can't press forward here obviously what I could do is just try and sneak this uh, province here though do a bit of a defensive blitz um, so I think we now let's prep for make sure they're all loaded yeah good also one nice thing for me as well um, there are no uh, allied aircraft in the immediate area which means I don't necessarily have to defend my transports um, in the sea zone around here. I can just leave them as they are because they're not in danger. Which is good for me because it means I can also, you know, move the defensive fleet back up towards Japan and I can leave the transports where they are. So that's that's good for me. So let's get you guys going. Again, I won't risk a bombing raid into India because I don't want to risk losing the bomber since that could be a crucial, a crucial unit in the attack. Okay, I think in terms of actually come up with that's about all we're going to do. Fairly simple move for us here, I think. Just double checking. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, so now we stack. <laughs> we stack the side of Japan in preparation. So what I'm going to do with these fighters, I'm not going to move them with the fleet just yet, because I want them in the area. Should we decide to go for an attack on uh, India, which I think I, depending on what he creates, or what he places in India, I think it might be a possibility. Obviously there's, there's potential here for, obviously given um, Britain's IPC spare, of five fighters appearing here <laughs> next turn. Because two from here and then three being placed in there, so that will probably make the attack unlikely. I'll check the odds, but I think we'd, it would be pretty close. I think maybe too close to risk, but we'll see. Um, just double check nothing in any C zones. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So not a particularly, a, a, you know, impressive fleet so far. We're going to be outmatched for now, but hopefully once the planes arrive and we can start building up, we'll be okay. Yeah, sorry, the, the nice thing about having the fighters in um, Thailand is if I need them to move back towards the fleet, they can do. They've got the, obviously, the range to move either to India or if the US fleet makes a move, we can always just move them back into the uh, the fleet here. So that, that's nice. They're, they're in quite a nice spot in Thailand, so we'll leave them there. But that should do it for me, I think. That's about all we can do. Again, the transports are safe where they are. There's no danger of getting hit from anything, which is nice. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's close. I didn't notice this straight away. <laughs> that could have been disastrous. Hang on, are we, are we definitely sure that can't reach? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it can't. It's close, though. It was really close. It's a good job I saw that, because, well, it, it wouldn't have mattered, but still, it's... Little things like that, if you miss them, they can be so costly. Because <laughs> four transports at this stage would have been really bad. Really bad. But I think we're okay. So let's put our newly purchased boats in the water. Okay, it's 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 really weird actually. Because Russia and Germany have pretty much killed them. Both of them, they killed themselves really. Like the combat between them, they're both really low on units. Um, 
What's bad for our team is that Germany's not really got many reinforcements on the way. They've got three tanks in Corellia, but um, there's nothing really to support apart from aircraft, so yeah. They'll be creating some infantry maybe out of here. Or possibly what he could do, I suppose, if this, this transport's still available, if he's creating um, infantry and artillery, he could move them to uh, Bulgaria. Then he could possibly ship them into the Caucasus, which would speed up, obviously, the uh, the rate at which we're getting reinforcements to the front line. So that could be a good idea. Um, he's got a nice battleship as a guard there. Yes, yeah, so I'm keen to see what um, gets stacked in the uh, <laughs> in India next turn. So we'll uh, see if it's logical to attack or not. We might have to wait for a, you know a round or two just to reinforce with things, but hopefully, if the odds are just about in our favour, I think I might go for it. That'd be a nice way to um, break the back of the uh, Allies here, and we can start sweeping down into into Africa, chip away at the the British economy down here. But yeah, the main threat for me right now is the U.S. fleet. This is looking pretty scary. Um, so we have to make sure I keep I match this at all times and don't let them get a you know a massive power spike against me. Because losing my fleet in the Pacific could be really well, obviously that's going to be really deadly for the the whole team. Um, so I need to be able to defend my islands. These are the really valuable islands. So if they go, if they fall to the US, that's going to give them such a big uh, economy boost. That's going to affect the you know, Arvid as well. So I want to keep keep my allies safe as much as I can. <laughs> I like playing with five players. I've got to say this this whole setup is really fun because it, it it makes you really sort of consider your teammate a lot more. I want to be you know playing well and looking out for Arvid as much as I can. I think the um, switch for the allies as well. I think hopefully next time I might be in the allied team. Uh, if, the, if the dice rolls are favourable, because <laughs> it must be nice to coordinate as a, as a three team uh, against the, the axis. But yes, yeah, it's, it's going well. It's going well. I'll just check the the power bar. So we're, we're very even, extremely even, um, which is worrying because obviously the economy overall is stronger for the allies. Um, so over time they get stronger and stronger. So we we kind of need to capitalise now while we've got you know uh, troops on the ground. So I need to take India ASAP. I'm hoping uh, Arvid can get control of Russia and um, take that in the next round or two. I'll try and support, obviously, by moving up through China and taking away some of this IPC for Russia. And eventually trying to take out this uh, this block of uh, <laughs> Russian infantry in Yakut, which are causing me problems right now. I can't get through, so I hope we deal with them soon. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, round two. So I'll catch up with you guys in uh, round three. Thanks for watching. Take care.